Okay, I'm going to attempt to launch the Space Shuttle Atlantis and this is using the default Space Shuttle that comes with Orbiter. This is not the Space Shuttle fleet. So I'm just going to go through and set up a couple things here real quick. I'm sort of following the STS-129 mission. This was an older mission from 2009. Um, and the only reason I chose that one is because I have a good audio file to go along with it. So, let's see here. I'm going to use Launch MFD. And the only thing I'm going to use this for is to help me get the correct launch heading. Other than that, I don't really need it. And I'm kind of using map MFD just to give me a little bit of a help, a little bit of help on the correct timing of the launch. Although according to the STS-129 data, it was uh, at 2:28 in the afternoon that it launched, so I'll probably just go with that. And that looks like it'll be accurate according to uh, map MFD as well. So I think I've got all my MFDs set up how I need. Let me go through and check orbit. Okay, that looks looks like what I want. Oh yeah, a line plane. I'm gonna want to have gonna want to have that set to help me bring the relative inclination down. Okay, I think I'm all set. Let me bring up my audio file. So you shuttle now on internal power. Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill and drain valves are closed. All the rocket booster flight data recorders are activated. And the handoff to Atlantis's onboard computers. Here we go. Atlantis now in control of the countdown. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. So I need to bring the heading around to 42 degrees. And open the journey to shore up the International Space Station. Atlantis now in the proper alignment for its 8.5 minute line to orbit. 4.5 million pounds of hard rearing humans taking aim on the International Outpost. 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis almost 2 miles in altitude. Almost 6 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center already. Traveling 500 miles an hour. This is not going so well. Three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rate of performance going into the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Fifty-five seconds into the flight, all systems operating normally, 900 miles an hour. The speed of Atlantis right now, six miles in altitude, nine miles downrange. Atlantis, go and throttle up. Copy, go and throttle up. Throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Charlie Hobaugh, joined on the flight deck by Pilot Butch Wilmore, Flight Engineer Randy Bresnik, and Leland Melvin, seated down in the mid 
handed over a long time ago. The last flying of the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines draining about a half a ton of fuel per second from the large fuel tank. Coming up on the three minute mark into the flight, Atlantis 46 miles in altitude, 81 miles downrange, traveling almost 4,000 miles an hour. Atlantis speeding speed. Yeah, we're not even close to 4,000 miles an hour. Three and a half minutes into the flight, all of Atlantis' systems functioning by the book. 55 miles in altitude, 120 miles downrange, traveling almost 5,000 miles an hour. I don't even know if I'm going to make a orbit.
me go according to the audio file, but I've still got quite a ways to go. I'm not gonna, definitely not gonna meet cutoff according to the audio file. Yeah, I've still got another 1500 kilometers per second, or 1500 meters per second to go. And I still need to get Apoapsis in front of me. It's coming up, it's almost there. Alright, Apoapsis is now in front of me. So I can bring the pitch down now. I might actually make orbit after all. Unbelievable. I didn't think I'd make it. So I'm going to separate, well, actually the fuel tank separates automatically when it runs out. Now I'm going to use translation. translation thrusters to get myself up away from it a little bit. Just putting some more distance between me and the, uh, the fuel tank. And the way the space shuttle usually works is that it will roll over and take pictures of the external tank after launch. I'm not going to do that. Coming up on apoapsis too soon, I need to be in the prograde position to circularize my orbit the rest of the way. Apoapsis in 100 seconds. And right now my periapsis is 11 kilometers. I need it to be over 150 kilometers. But I'm going to just make it circular with, with apoapsis. So basically, I'll bring periapsis up to 247 kilometers. Relative inclination isn't too bad. 1.79 degrees. It really should be lower than that for the space shuttle because the engines are so weak, it's hard to make corrections. <laughs> 